Hey everybody, it's Tony from Adafruit, and I wanted to do a stream on Circuit Playground. So that's the cool new board, uh, oops, that I thought I had handy a second ago over here. Uh, let's see, I've got one over here. So always have spare Circuit Playgrounds around, uh, and basically it's uh, the all-in-one board that has all kinds of little sensors uh, and you know everything you need to get started. So it has NeoPixels, it has a uh, temperature sensor, it has an accelerometer, it has a light sensor on the board. All very easy to use, pre-soldered, so you don't need to worry about like setting up a board and learning how to solder and do all that. Uh, meant to be a really easy kind of introduction to you know physical computing, Arduino making, all kinds of things like that. And so we've been filling out the Circuit Playground library with different examples and demos. And I just added a demo today of some analog sensor uh, kind of fun you can have. So like how to read the temperature sensor and stuff like that. And I thought, well, let's just do a quick little stream on it. So I'll just kind of walk through the demo, kind of show what the code does, and then maybe explain in a little bit of detail about how to actually deal with analog signals in Arduino code. Uh, and maybe kind of help you understand, like, what does it mean to look at an analog input. Like what's the difference between the analog read function versus the digital read function where you can just read like an on or an off value for this. So let's just kind of dive in. I'll show you the example. So we'll switch to uh, the main view here. Let's see, we'll turn on all the other cameras and let's go to this view. So, okay, so I, what I've got going on here um, in the upper right, this is the circuit playground board and it's running a little demo sketch and I'll, I'll actually load it up and show you the code here in a second. Uh, and then I've just got the Arduino IDE open. And so to uh, use Circuit Playground now, uh, and I'll put links in the description below when this is up on YouTube. So uh, like links to the Circuit Playground guide, you know, first you need to do a little bit of setup to configure the Ar Arduino IDE so that eventually in the board menu, you should see the Adafruit Circuit Playground board. Uh, and that's just adding a little special URL to the preferences. That'll download a board package in the board manager uh, up here, and then you can install Circuit Playground. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do on Windows. You also have to install a little driver, but all of that is in the Circuit Playground guide that kind of gets you started and tells you how to start using it. Uh, so once you install Circuit Playground, the other thing you want to install is a library. And so if I go into uh, the sketch, include library, manage libraries, and if I search for the library called, uh, just you can type in Circuit Playground, or actually just type Circuit because it has Circuit Space Playground. Uh, and you can see this Adafruit Circuit Playground library. So I'm using version 1.0.3. Um, and you might actually see I just updated it. Uh, so if you're following along live, uh, you won't see this library yet. It takes about a day for Arduino's package manager to update. Uh, and if you really want it, you can go to GitHub and grab this. Uh, but basically, by the time you're seeing this video, install the latest version and you'll see all the examples in here. Uh, and so I added an example. So then once the library is installed, if you go into examples, and you find uh, the Adafruit Circuit Playground library here. <clears throat> Excuse me, you'll see, so there's a demo. This is kind of the main demo that just shows how all the different components on the board work. Uh, there's the Circuit Playground Fermata firmware, which this uses the Fermata protocol that I've done a bunch of videos on uh, to remotely control the board from your computer. So like your computer can run code that controls the board, which is really cool, but a whole other topic. And then I just added this analog sensors demo. And so this is what we'll kind of go through and I'll show you what this does. And I basically, I wanted to highlight all the different analog sensors that are on the Circuit Playground board. So there's the temperature sensor, which is really just a thermistor, which means it changes its resistance based on the temperature. So if it gets hotter, it changes resistance. If it gets cooler, it changes in a, a proportional way. There's a sound sensor or a microphone, which you know basically just listens for sound pressure. So like you know the waves of sound uh, or the waves of air pressure from me talking, that causes the microphone to uh, vibrate. And then you can pick that up and read that as the analog input. And there's also a light sensor. So it's like a simple little light sensor that just gives you an analog value of, you know it's, it increases or decreases its resistance based on the light level that we see. And then the board, it also has just some of the output, some of the pins around the exterior here. Uh, I call them pins, but you know, they're more like little holes here. You know, you can connect the alligator clips uh, to these, you can solder directly to them, uh, all of these inputs. So there are a few of them that you can actually use as analog inputs on the Circuit Playground board. So you can connect your own analog stuff to these uh, and deal with uh, and kind of read the values there. Uh, and so what I want to do with this, this example is make a way to kind of intuitively understand what does an analog value mean? 
So, you know, what, what does it mean when I have a light sensor and it's giving me some reading? You know, if it's a big number, what does that mean, you know, compared to if it's a small number? And get like an intuitive sense of that. And I thought a really good way to do that would be to take analog values like the sound sensor or the light sensor and convert them into color or even sound. So there's a little buzzer on the board, a little piezo buzzer uh, that can uh, play back tones. And so I thought, you know, it would be a good example of reading an analog input and then converting it into a color so like maybe take a spectrum of like red to blue colors and you know if your light level is kind of halfway in between then you get like a pinkish color uh, in between there so you know that's one kind of intuitive way is just seeing the color and seeing it change as you change the sensor value uh, and then the other thing that i thought would be interesting is you know playing a tone of sound so just playing a frequency you know like a 440 hertz frequency is like a c uh, i think or maybe it's an a tone uh, but it's you know that, that's a standard kind of tone like you might hear on a piano and so if you play a range of frequencies from like, you know, 440 to like 900 hertz or so, then you'll get basically a scale of sound. So, you know, any kind of frequency in between there. Uh, so you can take that analog value and hear it as sound, uh, which is kind of interesting because you've got all these other sensors on here. So, you know, it's not just the light sensor. You could apply that to the temperature sensor so that, you know, as the temperature increases, maybe the tone increases, uh, things like that. And we could even hook up an external sensor here too. So I'll show you uh, like a, a potentiometer that you could use as kind of a stand-in for an analog sensor. It's a real good way to get an analog value to, uh, to play with here. So I'll kind of walk through the code for this and uh, point out maybe some interesting things. And then we'll just run some demos. Um, maybe, maybe first just to start with, I'll just kind of show you how I have it set up right now. So right now it's set up, it's actually reading the light sensor on Circuit Playground, which is, uh, if you look at the board, there's a little eye. It's like a picture of an eye, like an eyeball. Uh, and that's where the light sensor, it's on this side of the board right here where my finger's pointing. And so if I cover this up, you might notice the LEDs get a little more red. And then if I open, if I kind of move my hand away, they get a little bit pinker. I'm going to increase the light. Uh, I have a, uh, a lamp up above here. Let me just crank this up. And once it gets focused, so you see, I, I just increased the light level and they look a little bit bluer. Uh, maybe if I decrease the light level again, let's uh, turn that down. You'll see that they get a little pinker and a little redder. And that's basically, it's converting the value from the light sensor, an analog value that it's reading, into a color and so if it's a low value it's going for a red color it's so like when i cover up this sensor it turns the light level is a very low lo low value and then as it gets more light the value increases and then it changes the color to be more of a blue color and if it was like totally full bright then it would be completely blue and i'll actually show you too you can look in the serial monitor uh, of this sketch and so this is actually just dumping out uh, every like 10 or 100 milliseconds or so the raw analog sensor value and so you can see as I cover up uh, the sensor it goes down to like almost zero and if I take my hand away it goes up to like 40 if I increase the light level again you know if I turn this light up and maybe just crank it all the way up to full bright uh, you can see the camera kind of uh, the exposure compensates for it but the values that the light sensor reads go up uh, quite a bit so they're up around like almost 300 or so uh, so I'll turn this back down so you can see the pixel colors there but that's pretty cool. You can see like the value is changing. And the neat thing, I totally forgot about this, in the latest versions of the Arduino IDE, you can actually use the serial plotter. And if you just output a value, um, you can I think you can even do like a comma separated value. But if you're just outputting a single numeric value, it's going to actually graph that value. And it'll kind of show you, it tries to figure out the scale here. So like if I cover this up, you see it drops all the way down to zero. And if I take my finger away, it jumps back up to you know, somewhere around like 50, 40, 30, something around there. Uh, and I'll crank the light back up. So you can see it, it increases and you know, kind of gives you a, a little bit of an intuitive sense of what it means when I'm changing that light value. You can see like the graph goes up and down, the colors change here. Uh, and then the other part of this sketch, so uh, if I flip the slide switch into the on position here, you can actually hear, and I'll hold this up to the microphone, See, you hear that? It's making a tone, and if I cover this up, the tone actually gets a little bit lower in frequency. And if I let it see more light, it gets higher in frequency. Uh, and oops, looks like the camera's not focused. There we go, almost focused. Uh, so you can kind of see it's, it's doing the exact same thing as the, uh, the LEDs. So, you know, as I cover it up, it's scaling the value of the frequency, just like it's scaling the color on the NeoPixels. And then if I let more light hit it, 
you know, that value increases and it scales the, the frequency of the tone. So it gets to a higher pitch tone here. And I'm just going to turn that off so I <laughs> don't want to listen to that buzzing uh, all the time. But again, it's another kind of intuitive way to understand that, you know, an analog sensor is just giving you a continuous value. It's, you know, a value that could range from, you know, some very small value like zero all the way up to some maximum value. And like for this light sensor, you know, when it's really bright, we're seeing a value of like 300, but it could be even higher than that. Now on the Arduino itself or on the circuit playground, um, the way that it reads analog values, it uses something called an analog to digital converter, uh, which are just a kind of a component that lets you take an analog signal, which is really just a voltage. And I'll actually show you more detail with that. We can look with the multimeter at what some of these voltages are, but it's just a voltage. So, you know, it could be zero volts, which is like ground level, it could be 3.3 volts, which is kind of like the maximum value that the circuit playground board can read, or it could be any voltage in between there. And because these sensors are set up in a certain way that at, you know, as their resistance changes, that causes the voltage to change that's read by an analog input on the circuit playground board. And so that's why you can get a value that changes, you know, it goes not just from completely on or completely off, which is like a digital input, it's somewhere in between there. So, you know, you could be like halfway on and halfway off, or maybe, you know, a quarter on or a quarter off, you know, you're just somewhere in that spectrum of zero to 3.3 volts. That's the value that you're getting from that analog sensor here. Um, so the sketch at the top here, it lets you kind of pick out and say, okay, what do I want to uh, use as my source for this analog demo? And so you kind of pick which analog input. So right now it has A5 selected, but it mentions over here what all the other analog inputs are. So A5 is the light sensor, uh, but if I want, we can change it to the temperature sensor. So let's just change that A5 to, uh, or AZ, yeah, A5 to A0 and we'll upload this again to the board. And then you'll see it kind of changes the behavior of the sketch a little bit. Uh, but I'll kind of show you that you need to change things in um, a few more places. So, so I just uploaded this. Now I'm gonna open the serial monitor so we can just see the raw value that's coming back. So it's coming back with a value of like 497 or so. So like in the 500s. Um, and now if I hold my finger on the temperature sensor, so it's on this side of the board here, there's a little thermometer on it. Um, let's see, I'm gonna make sure that I hold my finger right on it. So if I hold my finger on this, you see how it's kind of changing a little bit? It's it's increasing very slightly. So, you know, it's a very small increase in voltage. Uh, so it goes from like, you know, 493, 494-ish. And then when I hold my finger on it, it actually decreases a little bit. So it goes down to like 489 or so. Um, so it's kind of showing, you know, and, and as my finger is held on it, that increases the temperature a little bit. So as the temperature goes up, this value goes down a little bit. Um, and you can actually see in the demo sketch, there's a function you can call in the Circuit Playground library that will give you the temperature in Celsius back. Uh, and that actually runs a special equation, this thing called the steinhardt hart equation that we won't use in this demo, but that's how it takes this raw analog value and converts it into a temperature. So there's kind of a well-known equation where if you know some characteristics about your thermistor, you can convert it into a temperature value. And it's, it's pretty precise, it works pretty well. I mean, you can kind of see, you know, it's just sitting on this table and it's pretty stable. It's not wildly, you know, changing between like 490 to 100 and back up. Like you kind of saw the light sensor was a little more noisy where the value changes a lot. Whereas this is really stable. I mean, it only changes when I apply something to it that heats it up like, like my finger there. So, you know, that, that's nice in that it's a, it's a kind of ac or a very stable reading that you can uh, use just directly. So uh, the big thing though with an analog input that you might be wondering is, you know, what is the range of the value that you can get back here? So you can see this is coming back with like 495. And that's another uh, attribute of the circuit playground board, or at least the microprocessor that's on it. It's analog to digital converter has a certain range. And so it's usually defined by the number of bits that it has. And so this is a 10 bit analog to digital converter. And so that just means that the value you get back, it has 10 bits of data inside of it. And uh, that controls the range of it. And so uh, if you're not super familiar with like binary um, kind of math, you know, uh, a byte has eight bits of data. And so you might wonder, well, how many values can a byte represent? And it's actually two to the power of eight because they're eight bits, uh, because it's, it's, you know, CPUs at a low level operate in binary, which is, you know, base two math. So you take two to the power of eight because they're eight bits. And when you do that, that's, you get a value 256. So there are 256 unique values that a byte can represent. And if you convert those into numbers, like from zero up to the max, 
you'd get from 0 to 255. And that's just because the value 0 is a single value. Uh, it's one of those 256 values that this can represent. So, you know, you could think of another way from like 1 to 256, uh, but usually it's easier to think of it as 0 to 255. So that's kind of the maximum value of a byte. But if I wanted to look at 10 bits, like the analog to digital converter here, you just want to do 2 to the power of 10, and that gives you a value of 1024. Uh, and so that's the maximum range of values that you can get back from an analog sensor that you're reading on this board on the circuit playground. So you can get a value from zero, which means you know no voltage level detected, all the way up to 1023, which means maximum voltage level detected. And the way circuit playground is set up, the maximum voltage level it can read is 3.3 uh, volts. So if you get a 3.3 volt signal sent into the one of the analog inputs, you'll see a value of 1023 back. Uh, and so you can kind of intuit then, because I'm seeing a value of like 495, you know, that's roughly halfway in between uh, 0 and 1023, uh, then the voltage level is somewhere around half of 3.3. So, you know, maybe like 1.8, 1.9 volts, something like that uh, for this thermistor right here. So that's kind of your maximum range of values. So anything from 0 to 1023 is what you can get back for the sensor. And then it just depends on each sensor how you convert that into some other meaning. You know, like the light sensor you saw, that doesn't really have any natural unit that you can convert it to. Like it doesn't give you a lux value for like the light intensity. You know, it's just it's just some value that's proportional to how bright it is in your room. Whereas this thermistor, you can apply some equations and actually convert that analog value, uh, analog to digital converter value, into uh, temperature value like Celsius here. Uh, so that's just kind of giving you an idea of okay, here's the maximum range here. Now the sketch it does a few different things um, to help you do that mapping from you know okay, let's say I've got my light sensor and I see that it has values between like zero and three hundred. How do I turn that into you know red to blue colors? And the magic, the, the way that this works, the, the, what, the function that it uses to do this is a really handy function in Arduino called map. And actually, I'll, I'll pull up uh, in a web browser here too, just a few more details. And I'll put links below uh, to all these in the description. But the map function is really handy. Uh, you, you end up using it a lot in some sketches because basically what it does is it converts from one range, like your analog to digital uh, converter output, so from like 0 to 1023, if you have some value within that range, it converts it to another range. So let's say I wanted to take my analog to digital converter value that's anywhere from 0 to 1023, and I wanted to convert it to a frequency to play on the tone, uh, on the, the speaker, on the tone generator. Uh, and let's say I wanted to make that range of frequencies, you know, like 400 to 600 hertz. Uh, so y you can apply some math to do that conversion where you can say, okay, I've got a value like let's say 495 right here that's coming back from my thermistor. And I want to figure out where is it on that range between 0 and 1023, uh, my analog to digital converter range. And it sees, okay, yeah, you're roughly halfway in between that range. And I want to convert that into a new value inside of another range. And that range goes from like, let's say 400 to 600 for the frequency of the tone generator. And so if I'm halfway between that 0 to 1023 range, then my output of this should be somewhere halfway between that 400 to 600 range, like a 500 hertz tone is what you, you would get back here. Uh, and so that's what the sketch does. It uses this map function where you basically pass in a value, which is my sensor value. I give it the limits, like the range of that value from like the very lowest value it might have to the very highest value that it might have. So you could imagine like using 0 to 1023 in here. And then I need to give it the range to map it to or the range to generate an output within. And so I need to give it the low value and the high value for that output range. So this would be like 400 and 600 for my frequencies of the, the tone that I generate. And so that's really all that this sketch does. And so up at the top is where I define all these different min and max range values uh, for everything right here. So you can see I have a couple defines. This define is my value minimum and maximum. And so this is the minimum and maximum values for the analog sensor that I'm reading. So like right now I'm reading the temperature sensor. And so I have the value set in kind of a weird way. I'm saying you know, from 0 to 200 when in reality I'm seeing my values are actually more like in the 500s or less. So, you know, let's change this. Let's bump this up to like, let's say um, maybe 600 down to like 400. So it gives me like a, a small range that's somewhere close to this 495 that I'm seeing right here. Um, and then 
my color range, so that's for the two pixels that are lit up here. So I have a minimum color and a maximum color. Now each of these colors is represented with the red, green, blue components because I have to scale each of those independently. So that's why you see a red, green, blue component for my minimum value. And so the, my minimum value I'm saying is completely red, like 255 full red uh, intensity, no blue, no green. And then my maximum value in this range is full blue intensity. So uh, that's why you see you know, from red all the way to blue. Uh, so now let's just upload the sketch as is right now. So I change this little value range and we should see, you know, my, my thermistor is giving me a value that's around 500. You know, it's in the uh, kind of 495-ish range or so. Um, let's see, let me open up the uh, serial monitor again here so we see the value. So there we go. So you see like 495. Uh, and you can kind of see the color of the pixels is like pink, which is pretty much halfway in between that red and blue value here. So that's that's good. We're seeing kind of what we expect here. Um, and then the exact same kind of ranges I have for my frequencies that I generate with the speaker. So if I turn the speaker back on, you can see it's a pretty constant sound. So, you know, it's just kind of the same signal. And I can hold my finger on here and sort of hear a change. Like it very, very slightly dips down. And that's because, you know, we can see these values don't, really decrease your increase in dramatic ways. Uh, so, you know, there, there's not a lot of changing um, data coming in. You know, the data doesn't jump from like 400 down to 200. So we don't see a big change in the, the tone or the frequency that's generated. Uh, just because my range of values that I'm saying uh, that I should expect here is pretty large. I mean, it goes from 400 to 600. So let's kind of tweak this. Let's, let's make it even smaller. Let's say my minimum value is like 480 and my maximum value is like, let's say 500. So it's you know, only like 20 little uh, points of data in between there. So let's save that and upload it. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, sure. So this is, uh, let's say analog sensors demo. Uh, when you save an example, unfortunately, it doesn't want to overwrite it. So, okay, so let's upload this. And now we should see uh, a little bit more action as I kind of change the temperature or, or hold my finger to the board. So, okay. So now you can see it's it's blue. So and remember, blue is at the top end of my uh, you know at full max. I should be like pretty much blue. And now when I hold my finger on here, you can kind of see it's it's kind of flickering a little bit, but it's it's getting pinker uh, on there. And maybe I'll turn on the the tone now and let's see what happens. And I'll hold it up so we can kind of hear. So that's the steady state. And then if I hold my finger on here. So you can see it kind of it dropped down. So I, I took my finger away, but I'll, I'll put it back on. We'll see. That's so going to change the heat, and that's going to change the tone that's generated. So that's pretty cool. So you can kind of see, you know, just by changing this range to be a smaller value to fit the values that I see from the sensor. Because you know, remember, I can open up the serial plotter, and we can kind of see these values. So you know, we're pretty much around 500. But by changing that range. And even though that range is very small, like just, you know, 20, uh, there's only a value of 20 in between the minimum and the maximum, that can still expand out to a large range of colors from like, you know, full red to full blue, or my tones, I'm going from 523 to 988 hertz there. So, and that's just the power of that map function where, you know, even if you have a small value that doesn't change a lot, it can still influence a large value that has like a, a wider range that you want to use to uh, display that data. So, okay, so that's the temperature sensor and the sound sensor. Um, and oops, let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. It's a little bit uh, interesting. There we go. Uh, and so now I wanted to say, let's hook up something else uh, that's not on the board. So let's actually hook up a potentiometer right here. So this is a little uh, kind of breadboard friendly potentiometer. And a potentiometer, it you kind of can think of it like an analog sensor. Um, it's basically a variable resistor. So uh, you know, it's it's a resistor like this one's a 10k resistor. Uh, so it has three kind of pins on here. There's one you can connect to one end of the resistor, another you connect to the other end of the resistor, and then the middle one is kind of the it's called the wiper, and that's uh, picking up some value in the middle of that resistor there. So and, and it, that the resistance of that value will change as you move it along the resistor. So you know, if I go all the way to one extreme, then it's you know, going to be a, a very high value from that extreme. If I go down to the low extreme, 
it's going to be you know the value from there and if i go halfway in between it's going to be a resistance somewhere halfway in the middle there so if i hook up one end of the potentiometer to uh, the ground on the circuit playground board and the other end to power like 3.3 volts then that middle output is going to be a voltage somewhere between ground and 3.3 volts which is perfect for reading with our analog uh, sensors here our analog input function because then I'll, I know I'll get a value all the way from 0 up to 1023 the maximum value and uh, I can convert that into you know like light and sound like we saw so let's do that I'm just gonna grab some uh, alligator clips here or alligator wires and we'll hook this up so I'm gonna do uh, one end of the potentiometer so the potentiometer itself you know it just has uh, three pins connected to it so I don't know if you can see this very well um, but yeah there's just three little pins here oops let's see uh, almost focusing uh, and so you know the uh, the middle one is the wiper the output and then the other two can be hooked up uh, any way we want so one of them has to go to ground and then the other one has to go to power to 3.3 uh, volts on here so I'm just gonna make sure that I get that plugged back into the right spot so okay so one end I'm gonna plug into 3.3 volts and just using the alligator clips here oops so grab that one and let's put that on 3.3 volts right there and then the other one I'm gonna put on ground so I'm just gonna connect that and ground I'm gonna grab the ground on this side so we hook it up to that so okay so now my middle uh, pin from this potentiometer is my output and its voltage is going to change based on the position of the potentiometer so as I twist it around that voltage changes so let's hook this up to an analog input on the circuit playground board so I'm just going to connect an alligator clip to that and let's go to uh, input number nine on the circuit playground board so this one right here and then let's change our sketch uh, and we'll change a couple things so I need to change the analog input that we're gonna read so I need to use uh, analog a9 because that's gonna use the pin number nine on the board right here and then let's change this range of values let's actually set it to the full range 0 to 1023 so now you know this is gonna allow any value this uh, potentiometer might sweep between you know from from ground which is 0 all the way up to 3.3 volts so let's save that and let's upload it to our board and then let's see what happens here so okay so and um actually let's do uh let's open up the serial plotter again so we can kind of see visually uh, how this changes so you can see it's you know pretty stable it doesn't really change because you know i'm not really touching the uh the potentiometer now i'm going to sweep it to one of the extremes so i just swept it all the way to the right and you can see the value just jumped up to uh, pretty close to a thousand it's you know it's uh, probably 1023 so if I close the plotter and if I go back to the serial monitor then we'll see that yeah we're getting our maximum value so at 3.3 3 .3 volts uh, on that end now I'm gonna twist the potentiometer all the way down to the bottom uh, to, or to the the other extreme so on this side we're getting a value of zero which means that we're at a ground level uh, you know there's no voltage there and uh, you know if I open the plotter again then we should see that it's going to be a pretty low value and then if i sweep it back up then you can kind of see you know as i just kind of twist it up and back down and maybe back all the way up and we go all the way up, up to the extreme value of 1023 so that's kind of cool it's you know a little intuitive and then you might be noticing as i do this my leds are changing too so you know on this extreme they're fully blue because that's 3.3 volts and that's the maximum color value that we're mapping to right here and then if i twist it all the way down to the other extreme it turns into a red value there and that's because it's the minimum value that it's mapping to there and then if I turn on the little speaker then you'll hear the tones also and so if I sweep it up we should hear a change frequency so that's cool that, that's working pretty well and if we go back and kind of see like here's you know the uh, the graph of it changing and you can hear the tone as it changes too so I go all the way down to the bottom that's the lowest frequency and then real quickly up to the top that's the top frequency and then anything in between so that's pretty cool you know it's helping to give you that intuitive sense of you know this potentiometer is just changing its resistance 
which changes the, the voltage. And we can read that in the analog uh, input with the analog to digital converter. That gives us some, some value between 0 and 1023 here. And then we're just using different ways to, uh, to represent to show that value. Uh, and so I'll go through the code in a little more detail here too. So um, in the setup function, it's a pretty simple sketch. Like this is just setting up the serial output. And then it's uh, initializing the circuit playground library. Now all of the magic of actually reading the analog value is right here with the analog read function. And so this is a standard function in Arduino. And I've just set it up to use the analog input value that we defined up here above. Uh, so this analog read value is what gives you back the raw reading, you know, that value between 0 and 1023 uh, that we're reading here. And then I just print it out so that like your uh, little plot uh, view can render it, things like uh, the serial monitor can show it. And then after that, then I just do all my mapping. So I say, okay, let's do the color mapping first. So for each of the red, green, blue components, use that map function like I described, you know, pass in the value that I read from my sensor up above, and then give it the range of values that we defined up above in the defines right here. So like right now I'm using the full range, but you saw with the temperature sensor, I cut it down to a smaller range so that you can see different values. Uh, and then just use that to map to a range of color values, like my red minimum, maximum, green, min, max. Uh, so, you know, pretty straightforward. So the output is that I get a red, green, blue component color value. And then I just use some of the circuit playground library functions to set these two pixels. So I clear all the pixels. And then uh, this is pixel four and this is pixel five right here. So I just set those pixels to the color that I mapped above. And then I do the exact same thing for the frequency. So I just, I use the map function. I use the exact same input range, my minimum and maximum values. But this time my output range is my tone frequency uh, that I defined up here. So, you know, this goes from like 520 to 988 Hertz. Uh, and you heard, you know, it's a kind of a, a low tone to a higher tone uh, of, of pitch. So it's, uh, you know, basically it's uh, within a musical scale there that you can hear. And then the last little bit I have is just some logic. So if the switch is turned on, if it's switched to the left, then play the tone. Uh, if it's not switched to the left, then it won't do anything. So it won't play the tone, which is just kind of good practice because you might get annoyed by the, the speaker buzzing all the time for this. So, you know, really all that this sketch does is just using analog read and using the map function. But it's kind of showing that, you know, just with those basics and just changing the inputs to my analog read, I can do different cool things. So like, you know, I can make a, uh, a, a little theremin or like an instrument where, you know, a real theremin kind of operate on electromagnetic uh, frequencies of like, it could sense your body being near an antenna and the closer you moved your body, like your hand, that would change the pitch or the frequency of a tone that it generated. Um, you can kind of approximate that with the light sensor because, you know, as I move my hand further away from the light sensor, that'll change the value of it. And then if I turn on the speaker, that'll change uh, the tone that we get back. So like uh, that was kind of the first demo I had, but let's go back to that. So if I switch to uh, A5, that'll be the light sensor. And then we remember the values that we got from the light sensor went from zero up to like maybe 300 at the max. So I'll just change that, uh, my ranges. And then, you know, my tone for ranges, I'm not gonna change these. So these will just be kind of the, the same tones that we heard before, but let's upload this and let's kind of see. Uh, oh, and you might see this sometimes. Um, I'm using OS 10 El Capitan. It might fail to upload to the board once. Um, what you need to do then, you'll see the, the red little uh, LED starts pulsing there when it goes in the bootloader. Just try uploading again and it might work. Um, yeah, so this time it worked. So sometimes the USB stack in the latest version of Mac OS X can be a little flaky, but okay, so we've got it loaded. Uh, so now I'm not using the potentiometer anymore. I'm just using the light sensor, but let's see, I'll turn on the tone and then I'm gonna move my hand closer and then away. So you can kind of hear, like it, it changes tone a little bit. It's maybe not the, the most, uh, I don't know, good sounding instrument, but you could definitely do something like this. You know, you just, I move my hand further and closer away and that's just causing more of a shadow or less of a shadow on the light sensor. And then we can actually see uh, the plotter view here too, if I open this up again. So if I open the serial plotter, So you can, you can see this changes and you can hear it also. It's kind of cool.
that's pretty cool. So it's you know, we've basically created our little DIY theremin uh, instrument there. So you know, just with the basics of analog read and mapping between uh, those values there. So, you know, the temperature or the light sensor is one way to do it. Temperature sensor, you know, I, I showed we can hook that up. Um, the potentiometer, which I showed we can kind of hook that up again uh, and, and play with the frequencies. Uh, one thing I meant to show with the potentiometer also, let's go back to that one. Let's do uh, A9 as my analog input. Um, I can actually read the voltage value coming out of that with uh, multimeter here. So let's hook it up and just see, you know, again, to just really drive home the point of, you know, understanding intuitively what does it mean as a sensor changes its value. It's just changing the voltage that we're reading with this analog uh, input. So I'm just going to hook up, uh, I'm going to connect the positive of my uh, multimeter to the middle pin of the potentiometer. So that's the output of it. And then I'm just going to connect the ground to the ground of the potentiometer. So let's do this. And then I'm just going to turn it on to measure um, DC volts. So let's see if we can get this all in the same kind of view here. So you can see right now it's reading um, you know, about uh, nine, almost, almost one volt. So it's like 0.98 volts. Uh, and now I'm going to turn the potentiometer uh, a little bit and we'll see how this changes. So I'm going to turn it all the way down to its lowest extreme. So you can see now it's reading like zero volts here. And actually let's upload this sketch back to the circuit playground so we can see everything change as we go. So I'm going to change that range again because you know now I'm using the potentiometer which has a range of 0 to 1023. So let's upload this. And oops, a little bit of an error. So let's try the upload again. And then it'll go. So there we go. And then just to see everything at once, let's open up the plotter view. So now we've got, you know, pretty much everything. Uh, so okay, so we're at, we're at our minimum value here. You can see uh, we're at red, which means that's our minimum color. And you know, if I turn on the tone, solid low tone. And then I'm going to crank this all the way up to its max. So you can hear the tone increased, the color changed to blue. And then I'll turn off the tone. And then notice the voltage. We're like pretty much right at 3.3 volts. And you can even see in the serial plotter, like as I turned it, you know, I stopped at a few levels there. But now we're at our maximum voltage uh, level there. And so if I pull this back down, you know, I can see I can go down to like 2.3 volts or maybe go even further down, you know, like 1.5 volts or so, kind of halfway in between. You see the color. So now we're in like a pinkish color that's halfway in between there. And so we go all the way down there. To, uh, to zero, so back down to red. So that's all that's happening for all of these analog sensors. There's a voltage level that's changing as the sensor changes. So the light sensor, the voltage changes as I hold my hand closer and further away, you know, and cause a shadow over it. The temperature sensor, the voltage changes when uh, the temperature increases or decreases. And it's not technically that these sensors are creating, you know, some level of voltage. They're changing their resistance but because voltage and resistance are related, uh, it, you know you can you can see the voltage change just based on the way that we've set up uh, these these components. So that as the resistance changes, that changes the voltage there. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show. Now there's one other sensor that I haven't really demoed here. So A4 is the sound sensor, and maybe I'll, I'll just show you real quickly. I think this will be a topic for another video or a future one. Uh, where you know uh, the microphone, it's an analog input. Um, it's going to give you a value between zero and 1023, like it's uh, you know it's it's read by the analog to digital converter, but it doesn't behave as intuitively as you might expect. You know, like the light sensor or the temperature sensor, because when you think of like volume and sound and speech, you know, you're probably thinking about like loudness. So you know, if I speak really loud or if I speak really softly you might think like, oh, would a microphone just have like less of a voltage when you're softer and more of a voltage when you're louder? And it's not exactly that case because sound is actually a wave. So, you know, there's uh, increases and decreases in pressure so that as I'm speaking, you know, it's it's not just this constant value. It's uh, it's a sine wave of like an increase and a decrease in pressure. And the frequency of that sine wave is actually what we hear or our brains interpret as, uh, as sound. So, you know, a really high pitched sound has a really high frequency. It's a really fast signal, whereas a low pitched sound has a slower frequency here. Uh, and so that means that the value you get back from the microphone uh, doesn't really map easily as is, like just the raw values that you're reading. Like if you're reading the microphone every few milliseconds, 
it's not going to necessarily relate to like the volume or the loudness. You need to actually smooth it out a little bit or apply some filtering to it where you look at, okay, you know, I know that this is a sine wave like signal or, you know, it's a constantly changing signal and I need to look at like, what's the amplitude of that signal? Um, or, you know, like what's kind of the absolute value that I see for that signal. So it's a little more advanced, but let's just try and let's just see. I mean, you'll kind of see the values that we get back aren't really that interesting or they, they don't really change in a, in a super predictable way just to, like by reading the raw uh, sound sensor uh, microphone values. So uh, we'll set my analog input to A4, so that's the sound sensor. I'll keep it at its maximum range just so we can look in the serial plotter and the uh, outputs to see like what are the, the values that we get back. But let's just upload this and see what happens. Um, and oops, a little bit of an error, so upload it again. So like I said, OS 10 El Capitan has some uh, some little quirks here. Uh, now I'm going to just pull the multimeter away uh, because we're not using this. So, you know, unfortunately, I can't read the uh, analog uh, sensors that are on the board. I can't read their voltages directly uh, right now. I mean, I probably could if I uh, got some really nice little probes that I can get on the board uh, to deal with, but uh, it's okay. I think we're just going to play with what we get from the uh, analog read function. So, okay, so there's our circuit playground. Uh, we've uploaded it. So let's open up our serial monitor. And so now we can see these are the raw values that are coming back from the microphone. And you can see they're kind of, they're all around like 300-ish. Um, you know, they don't really swing in wild ways. So like if I stop talking, and then if I keep talking, if I'm talking now, like there's not much of a change, you know? You might think like, oh, I'm not talking anymore, so it's not loud in the room, but you don't see like a decrease in this value. Uh, and like, let's open up the plotter. So if I open up the plotter view, and so this is showing the, uh, the the samples that it's getting from the microphone. And you do kind of see there is some relationship. Like as I'm talking, um, you know, you might see like a small increase or decrease. And, you know, really this is because the sound itself, the pressure wave is a sine wave that's just constantly going up and down. And so you're just kind of seeing right here these raw samples where like, you know, right here when it was really low, it just so happened that the sine wave was kind of traveling down or the pressure wave of sound from my voice was at a low point. And that's when the analog sensor read it. And then it's, you know, a moment later, that pressure wave, because maybe it was a really fast one, you know, it's a little bit higher frequency, shot up to a really high value in the next reading there. Uh, and so, you know, it's it's really the frequency of this sound that's, that's controlling kind of what you hear. Uh, and maybe the amplitude of that wave is kind of the volume of the sound. Uh, and so that's why it doesn't really map well. So like you're not seeing, you know, like colors going from like red to blue as I'm talking or not talking. Um, and if I turn on the sound, this could cause a crazy feedback loop because now the buzzer is going to play sounds that the microphone is going to pick up. So I don't know, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I haven't done it. So that, that's a little crazy. I mean, that's, you get into a weird situation there where like, your sensor is influencing your output value and then your output value is influencing your sensor and then you get this feedback loop where you know you, you can see it kind of went a little crazy there uh, that it was kind of hearing some of the sound from that uh, tone generator but again I mean the, the, the thing is that you know even though this microphone is an analog sensor it's an analog input that you're getting back you can't interpret it in exactly the same way or as easily as the other analog sensors um, and I think maybe a future stream we might kind of dive into more details of how you could take that microphone value and turn it into like maybe volume. So, you know, I want to maybe turn my LEDs red when it's really low volume and blue when it's really high volume. Uh, you could definitely do that. You just need to apply some more math and some more logic to the values that you get back here. But I think that's it. I think I'm going to wrap up the stream. Uh, so like I said, I just wanted to run through this analog sensor demo that I created and just put in the Circuit Playground library. Um, you know, it's really meant to be a way to play with the analog sensors that are on the board. And you saw that, you know, really all that this sketch does is use that analog read function to get back a value from the analog to digital converter. That value is normally something between 0 to 1023 from like ground to 3.3 volts. And then we saw we can play with different sensors here. So like the temperature sensor, the light sensor, a potentiometer that we hook up here. And as all of those things like change their resistance or change their voltage that the ADC sees, then we can do something with that value. And so I showed how uh, using the map function here, we can take that sensor value that we read and we can take it and say, okay, here's the range of values that I expect. And let's convert that into another value in some other range, like, you know, maybe colors or, or sounds, you know, frequencies of, of tones that we want to play back here. So it's a really powerful thing and all kinds of things, um, you know, you can find have analog 
uh, or could be like an analog sensor. You know, potentiometer is one thing. Um, they're force sensitive resistors, like a resistor that changes its resistance based on the force applied to it. So sort of like a scale, but mo most scales use a different type of sensor. Uh, but you know, as, as if something hits something, you might be able to detect that or if something's bent, like a bend sensor, uh, you know, that might change its resistance. So you could hook those up to an analog input on here and apply this exact same logic of, you know, just mapping from the analog values 0 to 1023 to whatever other values I want, you know, maybe it's light, maybe it's sound that I'm going to play back, maybe it's something completely else. Uh, it's, you know, really, uh, it's up to you, but it's a real powerful concept that uh, you can use in your sketches. So um, if anyone has any questions, maybe throw them into the chat and I'll see if I can answer them. Let me jump back to the main headshot here. So yeah, I'll go there. Um, let's see. Oh, there's one question. Uh, is this an anti-static mat? Uh, the blue mat that I have. Yeah, this is an anti-static one. Uh, I think I found it on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's nice that it's a rubber mat. Uh, and it's actually, uh, it can deal with like a uh, soldering iron, like you can solder directly on it, which is why I got it, because if you're soldering a little wire, it's nice to be able to do it on something you're not worried about messing up on your workbench. So yeah, these are really nice. It's an anti-static mat. Um, I think I got this one on Amazon. They're a little expensive. I think this was like 30 or 40 bucks, um, just because it's, it's, I think it's cheaper when you buy in large quantities, but this is a smaller thing that, uh, you know, people cut down and sell. So uh, but I, I love these things, and this is really handy to have, this anti-static mat. I don't actually have mine hooked up to ground, so it's not really well uh, anti-static, but I just got it because I wanted something to that could deal with temperatures and not like mess up the workbench here. So uh, other than that, I don't see any other questions, uh, so I think I'll wrap it up. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, subscribe to youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can see this video and all kinds of other fun projects and videos that we have. Uh, subscribe to twitch.tv slash Adafruit. You can see me stream this stuff live. I usually, I've done about three streams every week now for the past few weeks. Uh, I do a stream on Monday and on Friday. So Monday I look at something interesting with the Raspberry Pi, like software and stuff that's out there. And then Friday I usually do like an in-depth stream. So this Friday, tomorrow, I'm going to do a stream uh, to finish up the Raspberry Pi, Wi-Fi, talking to Wi-Fi things series. So if you have a little Wi-Fi board like the ESP8266, uh, you know, all, all those little Arduinos that have a Wi-Fi radio, I've gone through and I have three videos already that show, okay, how do you actually talk to a Raspberry Pi that's on a Wi-Fi network or on your network in general uh, using those little boards. So have some real good little demos of like socket programming and stuff in there. So check that out. Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, I'll be back uh, tomorrow with this stream and then Monday again with another stream. So I think that's it. So it's Tony from Adafruit. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know that this is uh, fun stuff that people like and, and we'll keep doing it. So that's it. I'll see you guys.